I have been so curious about the Lonzi fan and it finally arrived in the mail. We're using it on the camera right now. I do want to share with you some testing and some experience. This is not exhaustive for every setting in the camera kind of a thing, but it should give you some insight into what you can expect. And I must say, I am super impressed with this little doohickey. So right off the rip, Sanders did an excellent job on the design of this. This thing is super simple, but it gets the job done. They do have this particular pre-order version in Celsius. So for those of us in the US that are not used to that, you would have to multiply it by nine, divided by five, and then add 32 to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Why do you have to do all those long equations? Ask Google. But <laughs> otherwise, the design here on this screen, very minimal, but very bright to let you know how much battery life that you have. And you do have a built-in battery. So even though it has a USB-C port on here, you don't have to run with it with the USB-C connected. But I'm going to tell you why in a second you might want to. Now you may be asking yourself, why would you want to invest in a fan like this? Or is it really necessary or is it just commercialism as it best? And, and it's actually, I think for a lot of the recent cameras that have been coming out, necessary if you plan on doing long form content, necessary if you plan on doing live streams in excess of an hour to two hours because there are some settings that you can adjust in a camera like the ZV-E1 for example and I've been able to get three and four hours and then doing retests and just seeing how long I could go up to eight hours before I get tired but if you want to go ahead and not worry about any overheating symbols the potential of your camera turning off due to overheating at higher specs this is going to be the answer now over on Jason Morris's channel, he actually got a similar type of camera fan that just kind of wedges in between the camera space and it can work for a lot of different things. But one of the things that he noted was that it sends the heat from essentially the rear of the camera to the front and the lens mount gets pretty hot. This fan actually does not do that. And it doesn't seem like much with the little suction cup feet, but it gives you enough space and clearance, number one, on the sides of the cameras, but number two, also just that little bit to keep the airflow moving. You have two settings on here. The first one is just a number one and it blows the air from the front, it comes blowing this way. So it sends cool air towards the camera versus sucking it away and pushing it out. And so this is the first one. You kind of hear what that sounds like. Second setting sounds like this. And it actually picks out some stuff. I had already can see myself old ladying it out when I'm traveling. It's like, oh, hold on, let me turn my fan on. Now, if you look right there, that is actually the little sensor on this fan that tells you what the temperature is on the camera. And so if you're behind the camera, you can see what that temperature is and where it's starting from and where it decreases. And then you can see uh, just what the regular room temperature is if you're doing tests like that. My thing with doing overheating tests on uh, the ZV-E1, which again, I'm shooting this on right now, I don't wanna go in excess of like the temperature in the room or making the room hotter and trying to simulate outside because you have things like the wind <laughs> moving around, breathability and airflow in the camera that makes a difference. I don't think it's normal to be sitting in a hell hot heat environment indoors or outdoors not have a fan not have the air conditioner on or something and you just know so <laughs> i'm not doing that and so i work in normal conditions the fan is operating in normal conditions and i'm not babying this camera but i do want to give it the best chance to work in some of these higher end settings so if you're using si or hs hs is my standard form of recording so if you use hi you probably want to crank this on to two and the other thing with it is i'm going to crank this on to two and you can run this with a USB-C cable, which they do include. Hint, hint, clue, clue, Sony. We would like still a cables, chargers and stuff. Just, just FYI. The air conditioner is on. This is a noisy environment. It's not sound treated or nothing like that. But just listen to the fan noise just so you can get an idea. I'm gonna put it closer to the mic. Here, the, here I kicked up. So once you have this connected via USB-C in the fan, 
and you have that back on the rear of your camera, then you do want to go ahead and that's going to give you like the best performance possible. Now, it depends if you're running like a V mount battery, NPF battery or something like that. I recently saw a design I'm very, very excited to try, which is the Cine Rig by Caleb Pike, who runs the Camera Foundry. And so it's a 3D printed side grill, if you will. He actually has a built-in fan for that. And let's just uh, address another elephant in the room. Is it a little ridiculous to be talking about fans for cameras in excess of $2,000 and stuff? Yes, I understand. We've had that conversation. May we move on now? So depending on what you plan to do with this or what settings, what environments, if you need more kick out of the level one or the level two, go ahead and plug it in and that will give you some more power. What I'm using just on here right now is just a little 4,400 milliamp hour. I've been running this for hours, like hours. I did two one hour podcast episodes in addition to however long, maybe 15 or 20 minutes uh, ahead of that, that the camera was running 30 to 40 minutes uploading uh, when it comes to that content scheduling and did some social posts and stuff like that. So it's been running for a few hours and I'm just now down to just one cell missing there. But otherwise this has worked out well just to kind of keep this plunked in the closet or, or what have you and just leave this fan on. So size comparison is actually very, very small, maybe two SD cards or so tall, but just to give you an idea. So it's much smaller than I thought it would be performance wise. It's been amazing. Now I like to do 4K HS, 10 bit, 422, all that different stuff, because again, running a ton of tests with this camera. Now, what I did was the streaming test, which is more of a stress test at the higher settings. And I recently just did one tonight with doing all the podcasts and stuff, all the doors closed, except the battery door, cause that just always open when I'm doing that. Nothing open but the HDMI, but usually I have the doors open. That not only helps to dissipate the heat, but just so I have access to everything when I'm streaming, since you're accessing from the front, it just makes it easier. That aside, I left the doors closed minus the HDMI, with the fan on and plugged in, never an overheating symbol turned on with all of those hours that I was running it with this fan. The other test that I did was let the camera get hot and turn off, turn it immediately back on. I did bring the settings back down. So I popped this on, ran the camera. I don't even know how long this will run without the battery so far, but plugged it up, ran it. And not only did it cool the camera, the overheating symbol turned off, stayed off, never came back on. And I ran this for, I think like two hours until I just got tired. Needless to say, this works. So this isn't model specific. It doesn't matter what you're using, but the one thing I will notice, like depending from going from one camera model or brand to the other, with the ZV-E1, there is a little bit of a lip at the top and the bottom, so it's easy to sit. And they do include a film that you can put on there for like suction cup, it says like thermal something. I'm not putting that on my camera. Sorry, not sorry, not doing it. Uh, but you can hold it on with a rubber band. That's what I've been doing or like a little plastic wedge, which I also uh, have been testing, but the rubber band is simple enough for what I'm doing for the moment until I probably 3d print a piece or find a different solution, but I'm not putting extra stuff on the camera. Yes, it will pull off clean, but I'm just not doing that. It's sorry, but it's tacky. <laughs> But with the ZV-E10, if you put this on there, it doesn't have a lip or something like that. So it's more prone to fall off. I have found where like these two over here will stay on just to the bare camera easier than this side, which is why I have a little thin rubber band. It's just holding that in place so it just doesn't fall. But I am looking forward to, again, just testing out a few different things to not block in and reduce the airflow of what this is creating. But this works really well. And I've been very surprised with this. And so where you have those more challenging situations that might be on the camera versus those that are more easy, this will kind of help you get over the hump for some of those challenging situations. I don't think this is something like you need 24 seven on the camera. I don't think that's necessary. But if you know you're gonna be doing longer live streams, longer environments, for example, I did uh, an event earlier this year and one of the air conditioner uh, units broke in that particular space and it was hot as hell. I left because it got so hot. That's an environment where if your camera was recording, don't matter what kind it is, even with the fan, it would have the potential to uh, overheat in that scenario. And so having something just as a backup, if you need it, is a good just in case kind of a buy. This is right now only available on Ulanzi's website. I picked this up for 19 bucks, which in my opinion is a steal. <laughs> and so I guess at some point this will be on Amazon. So I'll put a link down below um, just to see when that becomes available for right now. It is uh, higher at the retail base price, 
on Ulanzi's website, but we'll see as more manufacturers hopefully hops in this space, but kudos to Ulanzi for hopping in here helping out and doing uh, and solving what has been a lot of issues for a lot of creators. And hopefully this helps you enjoy your camera that much more. Let me know, do you think this is absolutely ridiculous, absurd, and you should never have to use for this? Yeah, go ahead, put those comments down below. I know you want to, go ahead and do your thing. And for those of you that are interested in picking it up, let me know, are you excited about this? Does this help you or what have you? But I've enjoyed having it just for those scenarios where it is a little more challenging. But if you wanna see the settings that I use for live streaming that helped me to get over eight hours in the ZV-E1 with even without a fan, no fan whatsoever, make sure you check out the video on the screen because that's coming up right now. Peace.